President Bush change your mind on Iraq, health care, or the economy during his State of the Union address? Well, political analyst Peter Matthews, chair of the political science department at Cypress College, is here to talk about what kind of impact the president's speech made. Now, you're a guy, you make your living analyzing this kind of stuff. How do you think he did? I think he came very forcefully across, mm -hmm. and he focused on three major issues, the Iraq policy, the economy, and Medicare reform, the three major issues, although he had a slew of other ones he added to it as well. We have a, we have a soundbite from President Bush uh, on Iraq, very yes. succinct. Let's listen to it and tell sure. me what you think. The course of this nation does not depend on the decisions of others. Whatever action is required, whenever action is necessary, I will defend the freedom and security of the American people. What do you think Americans thought of that statement? And also, what do you think the Allies thought of that statement? I think it's a very critical statement because he's suggesting that he will go forward, regardless of what the United Nations will do, without any sanctions from the UN supporting the US. He'll still go into Iraq and change the regime if need be. And uh, the Allies are very concerned about that statement. Many Democrats have challenged it and said he should really try to work through the UN and let UN inspections continue for at least for a while before going in. Some people might read that statement as reckless. What do you think? I think he has to be very careful with his wording. As a year ago, he called the, uh, the axis of evil. He put North Korea and Iraq and Iran together on that. And that had repercussions with North Korea this year, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wording is very important. And I think he better be careful and try to uh, be a bit more moderate and cautious about those statements. Mm -hmm. Interesting that he started his speech with um, economic issues. And um, we, have, we have some sound from the president. I'd like to find out what you think of, of what he said. Let's listen. Our first goal is clear. We must have an economy that grows fast enough to employ every man and woman who seeks a job. Sounds good. How's he going to do that? That's the goal of everyone, including Democrats and all the other parties. But he's going to try to do it by coming up with this tax cut, $674 billion with a tax cut in 10 years, in addition to the previous $1.35 trillion tax cut. And this tax cut, unfortunately, according to Democrats, will only focus mostly on the top 1 or 10% of the population. For example, it's, it's corporate dividend tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Over half of the $674 billion goes to corporate dividends tax elimination. Mm -hmm. So that means it's not going to really help the working middle class to have money in their hands. Democrats want to target uh, the tax cut in terms of payroll taxes toward the working middle class so that they'll go out and buy more products. And it's a different approach to economics. Mm -hmm. There are obviously two choices here. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, frankly, the American people will probably go for the Democratic plan more than likely. Well, you'd have to ask, too, can we afford to do this when we've got an estimated budget deficit of $300 billion this year? We're running at $300 billion, and just a year and a half ago, it was a surplus that we were running. Mm -hmm. So that's another major problem that economists are looking at, and the president has to be very careful about that. And I think that he may have to reconsider it. I don't think this will pass in its form. In mm -hmm. fact, the, many Democrats who voted for the previous tax cut the last time around will not vote for it this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. He talked a lot about health care also. What were your, yes. your feelings about what he said? Health care, he focused mostly on Medicare and Medicare reform, which essentially is uh, giving the seniors a chance to have prescription drug benefits if they will join HMOs. Mm. This is also problematic because many HMOs don't have the best reputation in the world uh, mm -hmm. for you and I who have HMOs, you know. Right. Uh, and seniors are very concerned that it'll take them out of the mainstream Medicare program, which should be strengthened instead, instead of uh, eliminated. And it's that he's trying to make a bargain with seniors, basically. And it would be also a very cautionary note. All right. Uh, I love talking to you, Peter, because it's, it's fascinating to try to dissect all this stuff. Um, a lot there. I wish we could get to more. Thanks again Absolutely. for coming in. Absolutely. My pleasure. Anytime, Kelly. All thanks. right. Denise, back to you. Okay. Thanks.